here at the Independence Reformed Bible Church, we do allow for questions following the service. We have, I believe, a microphone somewhere. Everyone has that. So if you have a question or a comment, please raise your hand and we will we'll recognize you. This weekend, um, I spoke with a woman who said that we were talking about contending for the faith, and she specifically said that uh, many members of abolishing abortion uh, would be at local abolitionist societies who go out with signs, are contending for the faith wrongly. She suggested prayer meetings, and she said um, the, the instance we were speaking about was a Joyce Meyer conference. And uh, members of the Abolitionist Society went to the Joyce Meyer Conference with signs. I think Second Timothy 2.15 was on one of their signs. Another one said, turn back. Um, and they were trying to speak with people. And uh, she said that they should not have signs, that they may hand out tracts, but that they shouldn't have signs. So my question is, what does contending the faith specifically not look like? What would be a wrong way to contend for the faith? What would be an inappropriate way to contend for the faith? Or she specifically said when I said Paul when he named her, uh, heretical teachers, he named heresy. And I said he went, she said they didn't go in public. I said, well, you know, Mars Hill. Um, he did go in public. And he did he went to the temple of the unknown God. He offended people. Um, so but she said he didn't hold signs, so he can't hold signs. So how would you? Yeah, um, it's it's not real well known. This is in um, it's, it, this is in a book that I encourage everyone to read. I know I've mentioned this before. I'll probably mention it again. Jonathan Schmidt's or Alvin Schmidt's book, um, How Christianity Changed the World. And what's not well known? We often see um, street demonstrations today. People with signs and so forth. What I didn't know before I read this book, well documented, a paradigm shifting book. What I did not know, do you know who the original street demonstrators were in history? It was Christians. People who believed in Christ were the original street demonstrators in the Roman Empire. They got out of the church and they demonstrated the street, just like we talked about Timothy last week, who stood in front of a godless pagan parade and paid for it with his life. Now, it's, it's, there's a lot that could be said about this, but I, I would encourage anyone who wants to talk about pro the proper method of contending for the faith, I would encourage them to study biblical characters who contended for the faith. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Most of them would be thrown right out of our churches. Look at what Stephen said at the end of his, uh, of his speech. Just read it sometime. Look what Jeremiah had to say to people. Paul. Jude. I ask. Do you think Jude is welcome in our pulpits today with this kind of a message? Do you, do, you think, do, you, do you think he gets invited back for another evangelistic service? I ask. We must answer these questions. You know, it's amazing. We have a generation of believers that knows how not to contend the faith, that doesn't even contend for the faith anyway. They know how not to. This is difficult stuff because I know that we can put people off with our words. But I don't want to put people off with, with how I say things. I don't. But man, I want to speak what's true. I'm not doing any good if I don't. And if the truth offends them, so be it. Of course, there's some guys that got away with some stuff, Elijah. Yes, gentlemen. That verse in Ezekiel that you mentioned um, that people use to uh, talk about how Sodom and Gomorrah were judged for straight flesh. Right. For a natural desire. 
Yes, I'm sorry, you're asking? Yeah, it was like, what was that verse? Oh, what was it? Uh, I, don't, I don't have it in front of me. Sorry about that. But it does talk about, it does say that they were judged for their pride, which they were. But what people do is they use that verse say, to have nothing to do with strange flesh, have nothing to do with it. And Jude is very clear that it does have, does have to do with it. It also talks about not taking care of the poor. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, neglecting the poor. It does. John's going to find it for us, I'm sure. Or somebody's going to find it. Come on, all you people out there with your electronic Bibles. I know you can do this. Who else has a question? Yes, John. verse says, for still our ancient foe, see, does seek to work as well, his craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. And when people stand up and say, oh yeah, I rebuked the devil, and I did this and I did that with him, I would say that him on earth is not his equal. And I think Luther, who, who really fought with Satan uh, a long time in his adult life, knew something about fighting with or knew what, what he was talking about with this. It just rings in my ears when you, when you talk about even Michael didn't directly get mistakes. The Lord will take care of him. Amen. Yes. I'm sorry. Ezekiel 16:49. Um, maybe in a second. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Tom. We'll get we'll get back to this. I I don't think certainly it's not possible to overcome well to destroy the devil, but to resist him, and I would say to rebuke him or to whether whatever impact that has on the devil by rebuking him, I, I think we are se separating ourselves, making an emotional, um, uh, uh, planting our flag. I, I, if, if rebuke is not the correct word, I think it's it's absolutely important to to resist, fight against, whatever the term. Sure. Um, I'm, I would make a distinction between resist and rebuke. Uh, because James is very clear, resist, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But to stand up and then say, I, uh, I chase the devil off. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, we don't, we don't, we don't ever want to do that. Yeah, great distinction. Yes, one last question. Get the last question. Just, just to piggyback on that is, I mean, when you, when you say that you have resisted the devil, that you rebuked the devil, what you actually are doing is you're committing idolatry at that point because you believe that your name, your name, and your authority is that by which the devil is subject to. Which the scriptures clearly teach there's no other name but Jesus Christ. So that's, I think, the issue in Jude, even with Michael. Michael has power. We see no matter what your interpretation of the book of Revelation, he's going to wrestle with Satan. So we see that he has great power. Yes. Um, and yet, what he's recognizing is the authority is not his. His name is not great in all the earth to say, I rebuke you. Who, who is Michael? Who are we? It's a matter of subjecting ourselves under the name of Christ and recognizing it is by his name that all things uh, are taken captive. So, yeah, I think it's just, I think it's really an idolatry issue um, that, that Jude's trying to warn them about. Yeah, and while Jude doesn't say the word idolatry, we see throughout the book that these people are definitely getting, trying to draw disciples after themselves. And they can't draw disciples after themselves without attacking Christ. So anything that attacks Christ in worship is idolatry. No matter how subtle, no, no doubt about it. Alright, well thank you very much. Yes, good question? Oh, I, I, thank you. Ezekiel 49, thank you. 1649. Actually, I have it. Look, this was the iniquity of your, thank you for that, your sister Sodom. 
She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Now, there's some, there may be some uh, information that we didn't have before. And that's fine. But to say that it had nothing to do with their attraction to say, strange flesh and sexual morality is to attack the scriptures because of what Jesus says. These two don't contradict each other, they complement each other. Done.